Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to MOOC in Tractomics course. In today's lecture, we will talk about microarray workflow with focus on data analysis. This is in continuation to our previous lecture, where we talked about various strategies involved in performing microarray experiments, various parameters to be taken into consideration for image acquisition and the user interface for image processing. Microarrays have become integral part of clinical and drug discovery process. They have been used extensively to find differential gene expression in variety of samples. Microarrays have been used for biomarker discovery, finding genes to correlate the disease progression, studying about effects of various drugs and toxins in a field known as toxicogenomics, testing the target selectivity, prognostic test, disease subclass determination in clinical diagnosis and many other applications. Data analysis is crucial to make sense out of the humongous data generated using microarray based experiments. There are many commercial as well as free software available which can be used to analyze microarray data set. However, no single package answers all the questions related to a functional genomics or proteomics question. In today's lecture, we will talk about microarray data analysis to cover various type of concepts such as normalization, supervised or unsupervised analysis, different types of analytical methods such as hierarchical clustering, self-organizing maps and principal component analysis. But before we move on to very advanced modules, let us discuss some basic concepts involved in the data analysis. Normalization In micro experiments, there are many variables involved. Normalization is performed for reducing bias resulting from variables like printing related issues, dye bias or day to day variations. Some commonly used algorithms for normalization are quantile normalization, variance stabilizing normalization, cyclic loess and robust linear model normalization. Normalized data can be used for comparative analysis so as to ensure that comparisons are unbiased. Principal component analysis or PCA. Principal component is the linear combination of optimally weight optional variables to test whether the protein expression is consistent throughout multiple samples from the same experimental group. They can be used to identify the protein outliers, mismatch spots, etc. The PCA works by finding supergenes that explains the most variance in the sample are orthogonal to each other. Clustering After analyzing the microarray data set, you would like to cluster data to find out the patterns in which cohorts are segregating. You would like to know whether your controls and treatments can fall into different clusters. There are different types of clustering. Broadly, hierarchical and non-hierarchical clustering. The hierarchical clustering involves where genes are placed in a hierarchical relationship to each other as in the taxonomy. The non-hierarchical clustering involves where genes placed in clusters that do not necessarily have any relationship to each other. Self-organizing maps. In micro experiment, it is important that you perform dye swap experiments to avoid any effect of 
psi 3 or psi 5 dye labeling. So, that there is no bias for labeling in control and the treatment groups. To replicate dye swap, microarrays can be quickly inspected for quality by using a self organizing map such as the one shown here in this slide. There are different types of supervised approaches to determine if the data fits a predetermined pattern or unsupervised pattern to characterize the components of a data set without a prior input or knowledge of training set. The data can also be subjected to dimensionality reduction techniques like correspondence analysis or CA. CA provides a list of differentially expressed proteins that are statistically significant. Support vector machine or SVM is another recursive feature elimination model which can be used to generate a list of classifier proteins to differentiate between any two cohorts. We will try to cover few concepts involved in data analysis and provide you the demonstration of the software in discussion section. Mr. Pankaj from Spinko Biotech will talk about the basic user interface of acuity software from molecular devices which is used for analysis of microarray data. He will also demonstrate the software operation for the data analysis. This is pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Pankaj Khanna, Manager Application Support from Spinko Biotech Private Limited. Today, Pankaj will talk to us about uh, Acuity software, uh, which is used for analysis of microarray data. The software is from molecular devices and Spinko is distributor for the same. In the last lecture, we uh, discussed about how to scan the slides, uh, microarray slide, by using GenePix Pro software. And once the data was acquired, now next step and next challenge is how to obtain some meaningful biological information from that data. So there are various software commercially available. Acuity is one among them. And to know more about how to operate uh, the Acuity software and how one can actually analyze microarray data, I have invited uh, Mr. Pankaj for this discussion. Hello, Pankaj. Welcome to this lecture. Thank you, Dr. Srivastava. So in the previous lecture, uh, we actually uh, discussed about various type of parameters which are used uh, to acquire very good microarray image by using GenePix Pro software. Can you just give us an overview of that whole process, how uh, uh, in a nutshell so that we are briefed about the same and then we are ready for analysis with the Acuity software. Sure. So let's quickly go through uh, with uh, GenePix Pro what we have done. Okay. So once you are ready with the slide, usually people put on and hardware parameters are being selected. Once that is being done, the image is being scanned and stored in the TIFF format. So based on the laser type 1, 2 or 3 or 4, you get 24 bit maximum image resolution possible. And once you are ready with the TIFF image, you perform little bit basics of analysis in GenePix Pro. Say for example, aligning of uh, different features in the form of GAL files which we have seen. Right. Once we have done uh, alignment, you go for the results where the background corrections and all other things will be calculated and then given to the results different column tabs. So once you are ready with these results, this can be saved in the form of a GPR file, which stands for GenePix result file. That is why it is just briefed as .gpr files. Okay. So let's go through as we are seeing here in the slide that the first one is getting the image, getting the alignment done. And once the alignment is done, the result tab after doing the result tabbing hit, you get the different column details in the form of different stats possible. Okay. So once you have the results in place in different formats, sometimes you require to have a measuring tool but usually all commercial and even the academic software give the GAL file details so you really uh, don't need to do manually. But in case if you want to do, you can do it. Right. And then, yes, I, I guess there are various parameters one need to look for uh, while performing good scanning and acquiring the data, including the background subtraction and uh, how to normalize the data, right? Can you just elaborate on these? Sure. So in the result tab, immediately what you see is a window which gives you configure, 
which can configure different type of normalizations. So there are different kind of actually background subtraction one can perform. So as you see in the image, if this is my spot in the yellow, which has a periphery ending in black and the surrounding area which are surrounded by white is can be calculated for the local background correction. So the local background correction is immediately near the feature which is the area which should not have any fluorescence should be coming in which comes is just because of the background that is called as a local background and we also have a global so any other place hole in the chip where the spot is not present the different backgrounds levels can be calculated at different specific positions mm -hmm. now this can be used to calculate for the global background corrections as you have elaborated in the last lecture user defined one say for example you have a positive control you have a normal control yeah. you have also got a shape control morphologically different ones so you calculate them as features and allow the equity in the configuration to allow which one to go for you also have a negative control which totally gives only the negative background in the same area of defined other types so I guess we discussed uh, the need for these controls, right? How important those are. And now I think we can see it here, like when we are acquiring these images, how each of the positive and negative control features play a crucial role in the analysis process. So after background subtraction, I think next important thing will be the normalization, right? Maybe you can just uh, explain on that. Yes. So uh, important factor is normalization because we do microarray experiments chip to chip basis, experiment to experiment basis. What happens there is, owing to the fact that different time points are being used to do the experiment, there are different ways where in the variance can come in. So you want to avoid maximum possible variations apart from biology. So these all can be handled by the way of normalization. So normalization helps to balance the chip variation across the chips as well as within the chips. Within the chips we do because we are using at least two lasers at a time, right. 532 and 635. So you want to correct for them that both intensity should match to the ratio of one so that the difference is contributed owing to the fact of the laser powers and the fluorophore stability doesn't come into play of biology. So there are different ways of doing uh, data normalization and the best suggested ones are the ratio based normalization on the mean or the median values right. which is actually a continuous type which doesn't change the shape of the data the meaning is that this is being escalated or collected but nothing is lost in the form okay. the other way of normalization is lowest normalization wherein you really change the data structure okay. so there some extreme can be removed for the data balance to be made which is actually a little less preferred so major preferred ones are ratio based which involves global and normalization factor and the wavelength based correction which can be done over there okay now, uh, maybe you can just uh, brief us on the analysis aspect uh, of the GenePix Pro before we just move on to saving the data for equity. Correct. So the very important thing here is the flagging of the spots, meaning is as we know that few spots could be controls. So you don't want to take them for the further analysis. What you do is you flag them as present, absent, not to be calculated. So these can be done by the fl flagging features. You can also give some Boolean queries, okay. basically on the requirements, what you want to avoid, so that the spots of the requirement go for the further analysis. And once you include the normalizations or you don't include the normalizations, you can save the GPR or GPR result file, which involves the basic things which is required to correct for the images. Okay. So once you have in hand all all these things you can check for the QCs in the form of scatter plots, histograms, and so also immediate visualizations in the form of data versus different intensity plots. So, which gives one an availability that fine, I have QC'd my data, spots are looking good, all good spots are went in, and we try to avoid some kind of uh, physical variations which happen. And this now can be saved as a GPR file which can be further do the analysis. I guess one thing is one need to ensure that the data which is going to be further analyzed for any biological significance should be clean. It should be a quality control check and all the control parameters are in place. And once we have verified all of those things at this stage, then only that data is actually ready for the next level of analysis. 
the more better you do QC, right. the more better biological results you do expect. So very rightly said that yes, QC is most important. One we'll need to spend a little bit of time. On Especially that. when we talk about uh, high throughput analysis, which is the case in microarrays. Here we are talking about 20,000, 30,000. In fact, uh, now there are very, very high density yes. arrays that are available, right? You are talking like so many data points generated in that one file. So until unless you are very sure about the overall good quality of the experiment, I think otherwise you'll be analyzing the very wrong data. So uh, these high throughput platforms provide us an opportunity to analyze a very, very large data set in a very short time. At the same time, what is very important here, that one need to ensure that the data quality is good. Because if it is not good, I think it's better to just leave that chip aside and move on to repeating the whole experiment at once. Because doing all the corrections and all the things will not help to really do the further analysis until unless you are starting with a very good uh, slide to begin with. Very true, totally agree, sir. Yeah. So I guess now, uh, once we have QC'd this uh, slide, we are ready for the saving the data for the next analysis, right? True. So maybe you can explain that. So the basic workflow involves that you do first level analysis, that is gene peaks flow involving the QCs, and then immediately the gene peaks flow gives you a direct compatibility with the acuity. Okay. There is a button on the side which allows to say that just save the data to acuity and immediately the data is exported inside the acuity. So they import the data based on the export from the gene picks directly. And not only this, acuity can also work as a standalone. So there are ways to import the data in the text format or the different format which it understands. Right. So this is how the acuity can be used for the further analysis now. Okay, so I think we are hearing about acuity now. So maybe we should uh, talk a little bit more what acuity software can do, what are its uh, major features. So maybe you can explain uh, just a few uh, points about acuity before we move on to the uh, knowing the details for the acuity software and what we can do with analysis. Sure. To begin with, acuity is a bioinformatics software. So it gives you a power that whatever basic analysis you have done through GPR can be now further taken for the analysis. Acuity advantages. So let us quickly look at few of the acuity advantages. It is actually client-server relational database understanding. So we give MS SQL 2000 with this, which allows you to save the data in the form of servers. Okay. So this gives the power that this can be your data warehouse, meaning all the important attached files, save any file like TIFF image, JPEG image, GPS, that is setting files, all can be stored with the result files, which allows one to again look back whenever you require to. And so also it is optimized for the windows. It is written in C++, which is actually gives a very fast power for it. So it can work very fast and give the results, saving your time and so also allowing one to look at more different statistical possibilities. Intelligent in the form of novel visualizations, we do have like different kind of clusterings possible. We have scattering available for you, scattering graph coming in. So this gives one an opportunity to analyze the data visually to quickly understand what is happening in the biological levels. Experiment and the microarray parameter management. So many scientists want to give a different parameters and allow one software to sort or understand the biology based on that, which is we call it as a uh, parameter files. Actually, this is, this is being MDT files for us, which you can import and manage your all parameters within the experiment so that you group them and do the analysis accordingly. There is a mage ML data export. What happens is as we discuss different QC formats, so this particular mage ML is based on the Miami requirements, which says what all is required and one how to do for the microarray experiment this has a direct export capability of that so this gives one a very good opportunity not only from the data to the export at different levels so i guess the uh, last two points which you mentioned uh, one is the tracking the data based on the experiments right i think that's very important uh, that's also like depending upon the need of the experiment one need to in fact track and uh, make software learn your experiment so that True. one can actually uh, uh, apply the same knowledge for the various slides throughout to track that data set. Yes. Now, second point which you mentioned about uh, Miami compliance, I think that's very important because one need to do all the quality control checks 
and overall data analysis with the very uniform guidelines provided. So one has to adhere to those uh, quality control checks. So another very important factor is that, as I said, Acuity can be a standalone analysis system. So not only the data coming from GPR only can be analyzed. So we are not restricted it to only gene picks. It can also take other format, even in the form of text format, wherein you need to give an information what each column means in, and then again you can perform the same statistics. So there is an automation management also possible with this. So you have number of slides coming in every time. So you do experiment, add on to some more. So there is a possibility that you can add to your present experiment itself, right. which gives a very good opportunity that you need not repeat over and over to understand what is happening. So find matching genes. The best possible application of expression profiling is differential expression. But sometimes you also need to know the matching of genes at the level of tissues. So even that can be handled very effectively here. Analysis, audit trials, the meaning is that you can look at what all analysis is being done as in the case of gene pick that logging will be happening to understand what happens to each one. And you can always correct for it and look back when what has done. So sure. the sharing becomes very important in that. So full integration with GenePix Scanner and GenePix Pro, which allows the users of GenePix Pro to immediately store the data and start doing the tertiary level statistical analysis. But this software is also compatible with other scanners and other platforms? Yes, as it can take up any text file. Okay. So basically whatever, if I understand that, okay, it is coming from 532 or 635, tell that it is coming from this wavelength and still you can do the statistics. Sure. So regardless of what platform is being used, it's just the wavelength and the text file which matters here. True. Okay. True. And we give training at the level of different stages also so that one can become friendly with the software. Okay. So I think it will be useful if you can um, demonstrate us about the Acuity software uh, so that one can actually learn that how uh, f the data obtained can be transformed into the meaningful biological information and also the statistical significance of that data. Uh, but maybe you can just first share the software interface so that we are familiar with the windows and all the keys over there before we switch to the real demonstration. Sure. So what you're looking at as a GUI interface of an Acuity, which is first divided on top in the form of any typical file-based drop-down list, which has a various functions. And then towards your extreme left, you will be able to see a common task pane. Okay. So this common task pane actually gives basic steps which one has to do one by one in a flow so that you end up with the biological information. The idea is it starts with the import of the data and end with the statistics and visualization how one want to look. So in this passion, common task pane actually a very good tool for any new beginners as well as for the mature or the advanced users to understand what one can do with the microarrays. So I think it just guides you the step wise like how you can uh, walk through the entire process. True. So it just gives you right from the input to the analysis a step wise that what all you can do and right. what you want to do in. And towards the middle what you see is a microarray root directory which houses all your data in a different formats. Okay. So this is a warehouse point on the top in the folder base arranged and on bottom it shows individually the each one slide by slide. Right. And towards your extreme left you are seeing an area which is a working and visualization area where you do or output different task what you have done towards the common task pane or towards the advanced one. So this is a basic user interface of Acuity. From this lecture, you got an insight into the detailed user interface of Acuity software. You have got the demonstration of various features and controls that this software allows you to control. While there are many software available for the data analysis, but the basic workflow remains the same. We will continue demonstration of how real data is actually analyzed further using this software. Thank you.